Crusaders as a part is a mixed bag in my opinion. One of his biggest flaws is the poor presentation of the Crusaders character arcs. You know, everyone except Paul Nareff. Characters are very important in my opinion and especially in a part like Stardust Crusaders where the main focus is put on them. So if a character is poorly written, then my experience of an anime or manga might lower because of it. A clever way to solve this issue without making long dragged out character arcs is that all the main characters in Jojo for example has comedic traits tied to them, at least to some extent, as that fleshes out their character and makes them unique. You know, Jotaro's implied cigarette trick is a good example. Look, if you do want to hear my opinions on Stardust Crusaders, then I did rank all the Jojo parts in another video that you should watch. Granted, it is pretty bad, so I don't blame you for part skip, but at least the placement of the parts are still accurate. This brings me to Noriaki Kakyoin, a very intriguing but flawed character. He has good taste in women, but as a character, Kakyoin is better on a second watch. This is because his character arc is poorly presented from the very start, even though it actually exists throughout the whole of Stardust Crusaders. Kakyoin is often described as someone with zero personality throughout, although he's closer to the realms of normality unlike Jotaro or Polnareff, so he doesn't stand out as much. But Kakyoin's crusade for that ass is ample personality for Jobro in my opinion, and don't worry, we will get to his personality later. But keep in mind how compelling a written or presented character is and how likeable they are doesn't correlate. But before we move into the analysis, we have to have a look at Kakyoin's motives. So, as we all know, the entire reason that he joins the Stardust Crusaders is to have sexual intercourse with the mother of Jotaro Kujo. This act of lovemaking is also likely BDSM, as he falls deeply in love with her while she's tangled up in the vines that her stand creates. This could be a representation of rope, which is a common BDSM tool. Alright, now with the motives out of the way, let's start with the actual character analysis. Kakyoin is a person with strong principles, trying to distance himself from his past as Dio's flesh body pawn. His sense of justice can get extremely brutal, like when he made that baby eat his own shit. Yeah. He also thinks very lowly of cowards who abuse the weak for their own ends, including his past self. And he's also a hardcore gamer girl, so you know, he gets the respect. Kakyoin is a bright character, making logical choices even in his final moments and it's especially sad that he dies during the journey with the Crusaders, since this is the first time that Kyokyoin has been truly happy. He goes through a lot in his life, being lonely and having no friends up to the meeting with Jotaro, and it shows his evolving social dynamic state with others. Scenes like the cherry licking works better knowing that he has been alone with himself up to this moment, and that he finds pleasure with small things like the And now, he finally made some real friends close to his age like Jotaro and Polnareff. Like, when Jotaro originally saved him, he was confused at first. He couldn't understand why anyone would go as far as to risk their own life to save him. And it is because no one has ever cared for him before, you know, besides his parents, but he accepts the second chance offered to him and resolves to never sink to that level again as well as to repay his debt to Jotaro for saving his life. He forms a wonderful bromance with his first true friends in life during the events of Sardis Crusaders, and even though his lonely youth isn't hindered at all during the story, me personally would have liked to move this backstory to the Death 13 arc since it's here his character really gets put into the spotlight, but his dynamic with the other characters is entertaining even without knowing his backstory during the actual journey. Kakyoin is a witty guy, he has a sense of humor and he plays off the other characters really well, especially Polnareff. He shows plenty of emotion during the actual journey, so I disagree with the notion that he doesn't have much of a personality. He's just a student, but unlike Jotaro, he's in a stoic and blunt. Kakyoin does immature things, like sunbathing with his uniform on, being horny for Jojo's mom and of course infamously rolling chairs on his tongue. But keep in mind that he's just a 17 year old boy prone to the occasional bout of immaturity. I think that Kakyoin would have been a more cohesive character if his backstory moved places and if he got some more fights focused specifically on him, sorta of like another crusader, eh Abdo? I like Kakyoin and it's easy to do so since his personality is just so likeable, but as someone with female friends who absolutely love Kakyoin, I guess his appearance also definitely contributes to his popularity among the female demographic and probably the male demographic, but his status as a solid Jobro and meme edgelord is ample reason for his praise in my opinion, although the reasons that I gave here is why I personally like him. So is Kakyoin a good character? 
Well, honestly, it's up to the readers to decide, since me personally think that Kakyoin is rather overshadowed and underdeveloped when directly compared to the other Jobros featured in Stardust Crusaders and even Jojo as a whole, but he's still better and more likeable than most other supporting characters in the anime and manga sphere. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Um, yeah, so you can you can leave now. Bye.